Okay, so here we're looking at uh, the very end of our naming uh, unit. So what we're trying to do now is take a set of mixed compounds, okay, so where some of them are covalent, some of them are ionic, and we need to figure out how to name them. All right, so uh, none of the rules change. We just need to figure out which of those rules to take. So uh, we're going to start with a couple of the uh, a couple examples off of some of the uh, worksheets we got in class today, and lead you guys through the uh, the thought process. Okay, so uh, let's go ahead and start off. I'm going to give you a list of about ten compounds. Okay, ten compounds, and we're going to go through a thought process to try and figure out how to name each one. Okay, so we're going to start off CO2. Li2, SO4, N2O5. Actually, let me scoot this up here so we have a little bit of room. Uh, we've got BAO, and we've got, still finding the right spot, there we are. And finally, KNO2. We've got another column. FeCl3, Fe2O3, OF2, N2O, and NIBr. We'll make that two. Okay. So the very first thing and the most important thing is to figure out whether each one of these compounds is ionic or covalent. All right, ionic or covalent. This one, we'll go ahead and use blue for ionic. We'll use red for covalent. All right, so let's start off and find all of the covalent compounds. Remember, covalent compounds, I'll go ahead and write this somewhere here in the middle. Covalent compounds are two non-metals. Ionic compounds have a metal plus a non-metal, or they have a polyatomic ion in them, or they have a polyatomic ion. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and mark off all of our covalent bonds, all of our covalent compounds. Uh, I completely forget which one, uh, which one we just said, so let's go ahead and start off our covalent. We're going to use that with red. Here's a, co a carbon and two oxygens. That is a covalent compound. Now, we're not going to go ahead and argue. We're not going to do anything yet. Okay, we're just going to mark off which one is ionic and which one's covalent. Li2SO4, well, lithium is a metal and sulfate is a polyatomic ion, so we're going to call that an ionic compound. N2O5, two nonmetals, that's covalent. BAO, it's a metal and a nonmetal, so that's ionic. KNO2, it's a metal and a polyatomic ion. FeCl3, it's ionic because it's a metal and a nonmetal. Same here. OF2, those are both nonmetals, so that's a covalent compound. Same with N2O, it's a covalent compound. And then we've got here NiBr2, it's ionic. Okay, well, we're thinking, great, we've decided which one is ionic and which one's covalent. Well, for the covalent compounds, that's all we've got to do. Remember, covalent compounds, they use prefixes. They use prefixes to name them. For ionic compounds, they don't use prefixes. But there are some little wrinkles that you can add for an ionic compound that you don't need to worry about for covalent. For, so as complicated as, uh, or as complicated as covalents get, this is it. All we've got to do is use the prefixes. So. We look at CO2, we look at CO2, and it is carbon, prefix for two, dioxide. We have a dinitrogen, prefix for five, pentoxide. Next covalent one here, oxygen, difluoride. And we have N2O dinitrogen monoxide. Remember, for uh, covalent compounds, 
You always need a prefix for the second element. You need a prefix for the first element if there's more than one of them. All right, so we have more than one nitrogen, so it needs a prefix. More than one nitrogen needs a prefix. Only one carbon, only one oxygen, no prefixes. So we've gone ahead and knocked out the, ion, or the covalent compounds. We said there was another little bit of stuff to consider for our covalent, our, wow, I can't speak today, for our ionic compounds. So let's go ahead and see what those are. The first thing that we're going to need to do is see, does this thing have a polyatomic ion? If it has a polyatomic ion, we're going to go ahead and circle it, like SO4. BAO, there's no polyatomic ion. KNO2, there is. NIBR2, no. Fe2O3, FeCl, there's no polyatomic ion. One last little bit, and that is whether or not we see an atom that needs a Roman numeral. Remember, Roman numerals have, uh, or excuse me, transition metals are the ones that need Roman numerals. And what we're going to do is put a star next to the element that needs a Roman numeral. So we've got an iron here, that needs it. We've got an iron here, and we've got a nickel there. Now, why are we doing all this? Why are we doing all this? This is because once we know what the uh, what the, 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 the classification of our molecule is, we're going to know how to, how, how to approach it. And it really makes it easy if you can group them into uh, groups of similar things. So we don't need to worry about switching back and forth and going, oh, I got to name this using this rule. I got to name this using that rule. I got to name this using different rule. I got to name this using different rule. No, no, don't worry about it. By grouping them all like this, we just classified all of our compounds. Covalent compounds all operate under the same rules. So once we've counted all the covalent compounds, we just went ahead and named them because they all use the same set of, of rules. Our ionic compounds that don't involve a Roman numeral, a transition metal, also all have similar rules. So let's take a look at those three. For these guys, all we need to do is give the names. So lithium and then SO4, its name is sulfate. All right, well, this is one of those places where you really do need to know your polyatomic ions. Barium and no prefixes, that's just oxide. Put this above here. This is potassium, NO2, nitrite. Again, got to know your polyatomic ions. Now, we come over to these three, FeCl3, Fe2O3, and NiBr2. Now, in these situations, we need to do that extra step and find the charge on the transition metal. It starts off like a regular ionic compound. Fe is iron, Cl is chloride, but then we have to go back and look at the charges. We've got three, and each chlorine wants to be a negative one, so it's a negative three balanced out by a plus three, so that tells us we have iron three chloride. Same deal. We have three, but in this time, oxygen wants to be a negative two. So we've got a total of minus six, balanced by a plus six. And we take that six and split it two ways. We end up with iron three oxide. And we're going to come down here. Starts off like a regular one. Nickel bromide. We have two charges of negative one, so a total of minus two, balanced out by plus two, this would be nickel two bromide. So once again, as long as you give yourself the, this, this kind of structure, first decide if it's ionic or covalent. Next, take a look at the ionic ones and see is there a Roman numeral, or is there a uh, polyatomic ion? Is there a polyatomic ion? Circle it. Next, go through the, all the ionics again and find the ones that have transition metals that need Roman numerals. That'll help you group these things into different categories and so help you name them. Let's see how it works by going through the uh, writing formulas. Okay, by writing formulas. So we'll, again, pick out a couple of these. Let's say four on uh, four from each side. This is again the worksheet that we got in the uh, in class today. All right, so. Uh, <clears throat> this will look pretty familiar for some of us. Okay, so we're going to start off with, excuse me, 
sodium oxide, carbon tetrachloride, iron 2 chloride, and disulfur triselenide. And one more column. Calcium sulfide, potassium nitride, nitrogen trihydride, and cobalt-3 sulfite. Okay, and as you can see, my pen is starting to go, so it is going out. Once again, first thing that we've got to do is decide, is this thing ionic or covalent? Okay, now, up at the top, we're going to go ahead and write in. Covalent, have prefixes. Ionic, no prefixes. Remember, we also need to oops, scoot that down a little bit. All right, remember, ionic compounds, you need to crisscross when you uh, write their formulas. All right, so let's go ahead and decide, ionic or covalent. Sodium oxide, I don't see any prefixes. It's ionic. Carbon tetrachloride, it's covalent. Iron 2 chloride, it's ionic. Disulfur triselenide, it's covalent. Calcium sulfide, ionic. Potassium nitride, ionic. Nitrogen trihydride is covalent. Cobalt-3 sulfite is ionic. Next thing we want to do is find any polyatomic ions and go ahead and circle them. We know we don't have any ions in covalent compounds, so we don't need to worry about those. Sodium oxide, no. Iron-2 chloride, no. Calcium sulfide, no. Potassium nitride, no. Cobalt-3 sulfite. Sulfite is a polyatomic ion. Okay. Um, well, but hey, how do we know sulfide is it? If it ends in an ide, we'll go ahead and put this up at the top. If it ends in an ide, it's a single, single element. All right. If it ends in ide, it's a single element. All right. Eight and ite are the ones that are polyatomics. Okay. So since it's easiest to name these covalent compounds, let's just go ahead and do those. Carbon tetrachloride means four chlorines. Disulfur means two sulfurs. Triselenide means three seleniums. Nitrogen trihydride means three hydrogens. And that's it. For the other ones, we're going to need to crisscross. So we have sodium, all these ionic compounds. We've got to crisscross. Write down the ion. Write down each individual ion as you get them. Sodium wants to be a plus one. Oxygen wants to be a minus two. So you get Na. Uh, what am I doing? You get Na2O. Iron 2 chloride. That means that we've got Fe2 plus. We've got Cl minus 1. Crisscross them, and you end with FeCl2. Calcium wants to be 2 plus. Sulfide is a minus 2. Well, 2 and 2, they cancel out. So you end up with CAS. Potassium is a plus 1. Nitride is a minus 3. You end up with K. 3N. Finally, this tricky one. Cobalt plus 3. Sulfite, SO3 minus 2. Crisscross that. Remember that you've got to bring this 3 to the outside of a set of parentheses. You end up with CO with a little 2. SO3 inside parentheses with a 3 outside. Make sure also that this is big C, small O, and not big C, big O, because that would just be carbon dioxide, and that would make no sense. All right, so hopefully this is helping. Uh, also check out Blackboard. Make sure that you are uh, keeping up with your, um, with your studying. All the uh, pencasts and such are up there to help you out. So hopefully uh, you're getting ready for your test.